Hi everyone, welcome to the virtual IoT meetup. I'm here with the winners of the fourth Open IoT Challenge, which is very exciting because it's the fourth year that we've done this and they have really great solutions to present to you. Before they start, I will just tell you a bit more about the challenge. So the challenge, as I said, is our fourth one. You can see the three winning solutions on the screen, as well as all of the final reports. We have 15 of them, so you can just go on the website and read them. Um, we had 78 teams that joined this year, which is great. We started taking applications in September until November. In November, we chose the top teams which got hardware kits or money to buy hardware, which was great because they could start their solutions, but the other 70, like all the 78 teams could participate even if they weren't in the top. And finally, everyone had to submit their solution by March 15th. And as I said, we got 15 great ones. And then our jury from our sponsors reviewed the solutions and chose our three winners. So today we'll start with smart solar water heating and that's Domenico and so I'll let you Go ahead and present your solution. Hi. Hi, everyone. Uh, this is uh, Domenico Francesco. And uh, now I share my screen. Can you see my screen? Yes. Uh, I, I am a software engineer at this one. And uh, if you have any question, you you can contact me by Twitter, email, or blog. Before introducing smart solar weather heating solution, I will say a few words about uh, the operation of a typical solar weather heating system to better understand the motivation of the project. Solar weather heating is uh, the convention of uh, solar energy to heat water. The solar panels convert sunlight into it and transfer it to the water that is uh, kept into storage tanks. The water reaches the high temperature when the sun is stronger. If the water in the solar panel is uh, hot, the divert valve close the flow towards the boiler, so the boiler turn off. There are two factors that reduce the system efficiency, boiler distance and thermal dispersion. Often, the boiler light up when users open the hot water valve because the water in the pipe is too cold. If the water in the solar panel is hot and the water in the pipe is cold, the boiler light up. The lighting up time is proportional to the distance between boiler and the solar panel because the divert valve closes the flow to the boiler as the water arrives. In this case, the boiler, the energy consumed because the lighting up time isn't enough to add up the water. When it is cloudy or it is night, the solar panels don't heat the water in the storage tank, so the thermal dispersion reduces the temperature of the water. If the water isn't used when it is hot, the efficiency of the system is reduced. So, what is uh, smart solar water heating? Uh, so, uh, is, uh, it is a solution that uses uh, IoT and AI technology to improve the efficiency of a passive solar water heating system. This solution uses a temperature sensor to power off the boiler when the water is hot enough. This avoids the power on the boiler for the cold water in the pipe. Furthermore, this solution uses a gateway to send this data to a server using artificial intelligence to make a forecast for hot water availability, combining this data with the weather forecast. This allows the user to know with advance the hot water availability, so he can schedule the use of hot water minimizing the thermal dispersion. The diagram on the right 
shows uh, the three components of the solution and how they communicate each other. Now, let's look at the three components in detail. The sensor uses an ASP8266 board with the protocol Lightway M2M to communicate the temperature read by DS80B20 to the gateway. Lightway M2M is a protocol from the Open Mobile Alliance for M2M or IoT device management and communication. I use uh, a Lib Wakama M by David Graff to enable LWM2M on the ASP8266 with a little change to fix the connection to a server because I use it without a bootstrap server. To expose the temperature, I implement the object 3300 that represents a generic sensor. In particular, this object has a resource with the name value that can be read, and I use this resource to allow the temperature reading. The gateway uses a Raspberry Pi with the Clip Cura to run the application that controls the relay board. Cura is a Java. Uh, o o OSGI based framework for uh, IoT gateways. Cura API offer access to underlying and hardware, management of network configuration, communication with M2M IoT, and gateway management. The gateway compares the water temperature read from the sensor with the threshold temperature to switch on the boiler if it is less than the threshold temperature and to switch off the boiler if it uh, is greater than the threshold temperature. Furthermore, the gateway sends to the server the water temperature and receives the temperature prediction via MQTT using Eclipse PAO. Finally, the gateway compares the prediction temperature received from the server with the threshold temperature to switch off the utility if it is less than the threshold temperature and switch on the utility if it is greater than the threshold temperature. The server uses a computer with OpenShift to deploy a MAS and a PASH Spark. EMAS is an open source messaging platform with the focus on scalability and the performance and the simplified deployment of a messaging infrastructure. Indeed, Apache Spark is a fast and general cluster computing system for big data. Spark, Spark streaming providing a high-level abstraction called discretized stream or DStream, which represents a continuous stream of data. And I create a DStream using IMPQUtil of Rad Analytic EO project to process the temperature message from the gateway. After that, uh, to reduce the stream, I evaluate the average temperature on a time window using the operator reduce by K and window. And then to make temperature forecast, I use a linear regression model with seven features. Previous boiler temperature, previous weather temperature, previous weather humidity, previous, previous weather wind speed, current weather temperature, current weather humidity, and current weather wind speed. When data arrive in a stream fashion, it is useful to fit regression model online, updating the parameters of the model as new data arrives. Spark MLib currently supports streaming linear regression using ordinary least squares. The fitting is similar to that performed offline, except fitting occurs on each data batch so that the model continually updates to reflect the data from the stream. Finally, to send the forecast message to the gateway, I use IMQP uh, client by Vertex Proton, taking the data from the forecast the stream using the output operator for each RDD on the stream. This solution 
is uh, only a proof of a concept. But for me, it is very important because it allowed me to become familiar with the open source project I used and to verify that uh, it is possible to improve the efficiency of a passive solar water heating system using IoT and AI technologies. In particular, in this solution, I can use a linear regression model that updates itself, improving the quality of the prediction by new data arrives. What, what can I do? Allow multiple gateways redesigning the address space and managing multiple model instances to allow multiple gateway to connect. Improve the accuracy of the forecast, adding a sensor to read the, the local water to local weather parameters to be used in place of this obtained from the weather API and building a starting model by geographical area to improve temperature forecast in the initial phase of the deploy. Add a web API to allow access to this part application and add a mobile application to send the notification about the forecast to the, to the users. Uh, that's all, folks, if you have uh, any question. Thank you. So if you have questions for any of the speakers, you can ask them on YouTube in the chat bar or hashtag virtual IoT on Twitter or even on the Meetup page. So I don't have any questions for you right now, but I have one for myself. And I was wondering, how do you see this developing in the future? Or do you see it like um, being used by companies or individuals? Um, I, um, I designed this project uh, first for uh, myself, mm -hmm. but uh, I um, want to uh, uh, continue to work uh, on this project uh, to try to convert, to transform it in a product uh, that uh, a company can, uh, can sell to individual person. I think uh, uh, it is for uh, individual, but can uh, be applied even uh, to a, a large uh, consume of water. OK. Sounds great. Thank you. Thank you. So next, we have Trusting IoT, which is the solution for nursing homes, which will be presented by uh, the team. And I'll let you guys introduce yourselves. OK. So hello, everyone. Um, I'm going to share the screen. Maybe introduce yourselves as well. Yeah. OK. <laughs> so um, well, um, we are, the three of us uh, are called uh, Francisco. So um, I am Francisco Jose Quesada, and I'm going to, to present this um, to to carry out this uh, presentation so um did you see it yes it worked sorry okay so so the thing is that um well um our um, the idea of our project was to to apply the iot technology to a real situation but also using uh, some um innovative technologies that in our case uh, we decide to uh, distribute di distribute ledger technologies so uh, this is why uh, we uh, try to use this in order to guarantee um, positions in in nursing homes so um as as uh, roxanne said uh, who we are well uh, first of all the first one is uh, uh, Francisco Javier Estrella. He is a PhD student. Uh, is a PhD in, in computer science, um, and he he is the the alma mater of this of this team because um, he he was who encouraged us to participate in in this challenge. Um, apart from him, uh, we have uh, Francisco Moya, who now is working as a senior android developer at uh, wave app um and finally uh, myself 
who well, I am a PhD student in artificial intelligence at the University of Edinburgh. So, as I said before, our motivation was try to um, um, use all the uh, advantages, all the the opportunities that uh, offer the, the technology in this case uh, IoT uh, and and try to create a proof of concept of uh, that uh, compiles IoT and, and uh, distribute layer technology. So for this reason, we decide to create a system uh, which guarantee the, the that the elder, el, sorry the elderly reside, receive um, appropriate care in nursing homes. So um, our uh, main points were just to learn and gain experience on on these uh, technologies using IoT low-cost devices uh, because um, we think that um, this is uh, also a chance if uh, these uh, devices are, are cheap because uh, otherwise it's, difficult, it's really difficult to implement in, in real life. Uh, apart from that, uh, the use of open standards uh, is something that uh, we also I'm so sorry. Um, your slides aren't showing. Did you to, your slides aren't showing? Did you want to show them right now? So, are you showing the slides or not? No, sorry. I thought you oh. meant. Did I see your slides earlier? But they were there and then they disappeared. Okay, I don't know why. So, perfect. You see that? Well, wow. okay. Okay, now, yeah. Okay, so well, the the thing is uh, to sum up is just to um, learning these new these new things and gaining experience. The the use of IoT low cost devices um, in order to facilitate the, the implementation. Uh, apart from that, the the use also of open standards. Um, and finally. Uh, try to guarantee the uh, this uh, uh, position uh, um, trying to use a tamper proof system uh, in order to validate the, the data that's uh, that was uh, stored there so this is our motivation um, and the approach uh, has two uh, different um, sides on the one hand just developing an indoor positioning system and on the other hand is uh, trying to add uh, trust to to the the data of this system so for this reason um, first of all uh, we define the the indoor positioning system to do so we use uh, bluetooth um, with a low energy uh, beacon so um, we use them as um, scanners and as advertisers. So uh, notice that in order to um, calculate the position um, with uh, some uh, precision, it's necessary to, to use for at, at least four devices. So in our case, we use it the uh, the devices that uh, well we invest uh, our voucher um, um, buying three different uh, Raspberry SP um, and also the the app square um, and we use all of these uh, four devices in order to compute these uh, positions um, and we develop these um, using uh, Cura components that uh, well, Cura is an uh, OG uh, based uh, system and also uh, an LCSBC uh, gateway. So, this is uh, regarding the indoor positioning system. But uh, once we uh, had the different positions, the idea was just to store them um, um, uh, in a distributed layer because the properties of, of the these uh, di distributed layers. Um, we think that's are absolutely essential in order to um, enhance 
the transparency of, uh, for example, a nursing home. So the, the idea that uh, doing that, uh, we can guarantee that the, me the message cannot be uh, repudiated. Uh, we cannot modify or remove store locations, we cannot add uh, pass information. Um, and due to the fact that in, in this case, we are uh, storing data that may be uh, considered as um, sensitive data, uh, we also um, sign using P uh, H PGP um, the, the the different uh, uh, locations. So because uh, the thing is that doing that, uh, the only the people that uh, has uh, access uh, can and see or can read this this information. But uh, we can preserve the. Um, anonymity for all the other uh, people that want to access to to this system. So uh, the technological stack that that we use uh, was um, um, Cura. So um, first of all, we use the uh, NQTT as the IoT uh, protocol for communication. We use the uh, Active MQ broker and the um, Paho, that is the the client. Um, we also use uh, React server, servlets and web sockets in order to develop all the, the different webs uh, that we have developed in this uh, process. Apart from that, uh, we use the um, common mathematics library to compute, uh, to calculate the, the position. So, um, this was uh, really useful for the positioning uh, algorithms um, and the Legion of Bouncy Castle libraries in order to add this uh, crypto to to the to store the, the data. Regarding uh, IOTA, so uh, we use the tangle, the IOTA tangle, so we save store all these location there, and to do so we also use IOTA. Uh, and finally, uh, we create uh, an app. So, then, and this was uh, developed in, in Android. So, this is the, the timeline of the different resources that, that we um, release uh, during this challenge. So, we started the proposal in, in November. Um, and first of all, uh, with this. Uh, um, we, we need to uh, develop these three uh, tools, Faro, Grava, and Ubica, um, in order to, and th this is the, the indoor po positioning uh, system. So the first one uh, is just a tool that um, allows you to um, change the, the way of the, of, the ras of, of the raspberry and to have different roles as advertiser or, or as a scanner. The second one was uh, Grava, with, that uh, we use this in order to uh, generate our data set. Um, and finally, Ubica, that's, uh, integra that used the other uh, two tools in order to um, compute the, the position. After that, uh, we signed and encrypt, um, validate this location using Firma. Um, all of them uh, form uh, Jura, that is the, the trusted uh, indoor positioning system for Cura. After that, we also develop uh, these two tools. Mira, that is uh, like a set of uh, experiments conducted for the challenge, and Mira, that is the Android app for nursing homes. And finally, we, we did the, the report. So um, the results. Well, uh, first of all, um, I want to, to say that um, in our case, we have to, to do, a, uh, we did a lot of uh, research in order to analyze different algorithms. Uh, we also um, detected uh, using Cura that uh, there was, uh, there were different bugs that uh, we fix and also we um, uh, collaborate with the um, <clears throat> with the, the, develop the team in order to to improve this tool and to um, yes to to uh, correct this uh, bug 
Um, and we think that uh, this has been a really enriching experience. We have learned a lot. Um, and also, um, we applied uh, new technological stack, so we are really, really happy about that. Um, also, regarding the, the community, uh, when we started with this crazy idea of uh, trying to uh, create a trust in IoT um, system, we didn't have any uh, follower, so we created the, the blog, the uh, social media um, account on Twitter, and we started uh, uh, using Reddit and Discord. And now um, it's, it's true that there are many people that are really, really interested in in this uh, work. Um, and we, after the challenge, uh, we had a lot of uh, um, meetings with uh, people, uh, with people, uh, and also the the followers in our Twitter account uh, um, has increased, uh, um, like um, doubling the the number of followers when we finish the the, the challenge. So as uh, I said before, uh, our output um, we, we can consider as output these three software repositories with these uh, three tools, Huramide and, and Mira. Um, after the challenge. Uh, um, we also um, developed Kiri, which is uh, um, a IOTA node that uh, can run inside uh, Cura. So we think that this is uh, also uh, an important achievement. Our future work is just try to apply this proof of, of concept in nursing home. So we have to study this in detail and just see the. Um, the problems that, that we have when we uh, try to to deploy this. Uh, apart from that, um, we are really interested in the idea of continuing with uh, this uh, trust trusting uh, I, IoT project. So we are going to create a working group where and, um, people from from the all parts around the world can uh, discuss about this uh, topic um, um, and we mm, we will uh, release uh, some uh, tutorials um, and create um, and also or organize some events in the future um, also continuing with the blog and social media um, um, we are going to develop uh, open components so uh, because the, the idea is if we want that uh, um, these uh, projects uh, um, become popular and also important for for people. Uh, the the thing is that uh, we we have to uh, help them to to use this. Um, it's necessary to integrate this in open uh, components. So uh, for sure that we are going to integrate this uh, in Eclipse. Um, well, uh, maybe uh, next year we we will. See you because uh, we maybe we will consider uh, to participate for the the IoT Challenge 5.0. So uh, who knows? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, well, these are our contact details. If you have any questions, that's great. Thank you. We actually have a question from Ian Craggs. He wants to know what is the range of the Bluetooth beacons. So how many do you need to cover an area? I'm going to stop this moment. Okay. So the thing is that now uh, we, our proof of, of concept uh, just um, has been in a, in a room. Um, I, I think we have the dimensions of, in the block, but it's around 25 square meters. Um, and yes, the, the thing is that when we started, uh, we saw that uh, we can try to compute uh, or to calculate uh, position uh, in indoor using three beacons. But uh, after that, uh, we and after different experiments, uh, we saw that uh, with four beacons uh, we can um, calculate like a, a more precise uh, 
Position. It's a minimum of three, so compute the position and it's recommended to use at least four to measure the payroll. Yeah. That's it. Sorry, to measure the what? To reduce the, the error. Oh, yes. Perfect. Thank you. And do you have nursing homes that you want to reach out to or have already, or are you still working on it? Yeah, sure. So uh, we have, but uh, you we don't have to share the because uh, the thing is that um, um, at the beginning we thought, well, um, we we are friends, um, maybe we can participate here. But uh, now we are considering, well, maybe we can try to uh, keep this more seriously and maybe to create a startup or something. So now we are looking for funding, uh, and because. Uh, if you have, if you want to deploy this in a nursing home, uh, you need uh, a lot of devices. You need uh, a lot of work. So yeah, okay. this is something that uh, we are studying right now. Well, that's great. So nursing homes out there, you know who to reach out to. You want to try it out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your presentation. Up next, we have Martin, who's going to talk about his project, Active IoT. Did I say that properly, Martin? Oh, yes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Rosa. Uh, I'm glad to be here. Thank you for, for letting me here. Um, I'm Martin Alvarez. I, I run the W3C office in Spain. Uh, so I work in a, in a high level, uh, I mean, uh, very far from, the, uh, for, from electronics and IoT uh, devices, I mean. So it was a, a real challenge for me. Let me share my screen uh, now with my presentation. OK, it's called Active IoT, timekeeping. Um, uh, I really don't like it, the name. <laughs> I tried to, to find uh, a sexy name, but uh, uh, I couldn't. It was too, <laughs> I, I, I was in a hurry when I submit my proposal. So I look for something related to running active uh, active uh, mixing with uh, iot so this is active iot so uh, uh, it's just the the, the history but uh, i hate it uh, about me um, as i told you i'm running the w3c office in spain uh, we we do a lot of um, uh, promotional activities regarding uh, the uh, standardization uh, standards of, uh, of the web or to the web and also for CTIC, which is a, te a technological center, a research center uh, involving many, many things like, uh, uh, for sure, um, IoT, uh, computer vision, um, uh, data management, everything. But uh, uh, I, I, I play a role, uh, as I told you, a high level role in terms of uh, providing consultancy services, but far from devices and far from programming, et cetera. So it was very challenging for me. As I told you, as I told you, the uh, activity, the the name of this was uh, it wasn't very very good for me, but I, I tried to to keep it, and uh, it was uh, as I told you um, um, very uh, let's say uh, improvised idea. I submit my proposal the last day in just in the a few hours to to the deadline of the of the submissions uh, uh, for the, the challenge. So I was in a, in a hurry and I, I took it. And my proposal was based on some ideas I already had uh, about uh, athletics. I like running, I like athletics. Uh, and uh, I find some, uh, some interesting uh, figures about the, how popular is this sport. As you all know, this is, uh, the, the most followed uh, discipline at Summer Olympic Games. Uh, we all follow, or most of us, of us follow the, the hun uh, 100 met meters uh, um, finals uh, with uh, Usain Bolt, etc. So, so th this is one of the, the, the most followed discipline at uh, Olympic Games. Another, uh, in, uh, and also it's very popular because it's practiced. Uh, it's, uh, Every single kid practice uh, athletics uh, at least once <laughs> in, in his life. So uh, it's very popular. Uh, also, the figures, as you can see, uh, for instance, here in, in Europe, uh, in Denmark, for instance, the 31% of the population are considered uh, as runners. So it's, it's amazing, these figures. Also, the, the amount of running, running events in the US just measure as, as these uh, 30,000 or more. 
running event uh, in a year with more than uh, 47 million runners. So it's uh, crazy. And now with these figures are uh, rising. So it's, it's, it's incredible the, how popular it is. If you are familiar with uh, running events, if you part participate in uh, running events like uh, fan marathons or whatever uh, type of event, you maybe you are familiar with these uh, kind of uh, ten keeping systems, fully automatic uh, ten keeping systems, like based on uh, this kind of uh, um, uh, RFID tags uh, to measure automatically your your performance during the competition. This is re reliable uh, real time. You will have the results, and it's easy to to use uh, because it's uh, provided. It's a service provided by a. Uh, uh, company, a private company. Uh, but the, the problem is that this is not very cheap. It's an expensive, expensive solution. Um, and if you are considering uh, uh, organizing, for instance, a fundraising, uh, fundraising uh, race for, for any purpose or just for, for fun for, with your, your colleagues at work, uh, you cannot, maybe you, you, you cannot uh, afford this kind of solution because uh, maybe you are looking for uh, um, almost for, for free uh, solution. So this is a problem. And also, uh, these kind of uh, systems usually don't provide uh, a standard export of these results, also about the, the, the competition itself, information about the competition. And another problem I see is, uh, look at this video. This is uh, some Im images about the, um, the national, uh, national uh, championship of cross country in Kenya. Uh, perhaps the best uh, runners, no, not perhaps, the best runners in the world uh, running here. You, you can see all during the, the course. And, uh, well, you see here the, the, the quality of these, uh, these runners provide, are provided with uh, uh, big numbers, as you can see. And uh, you will see uh, in the finish line how they will collect the results. The officials will give them uh, a piece of paper with the number. You can see here a, a guy report, uh, giving some big number, a uh, big uh, piece of paper with the, the position. And now you see here an official taking notes on a piece of paper. So you see the, well, it's uh, pretty good collected. They will use, maybe they use uh, stopwatches and uh, it's, uh, it's uh, well, it's a, uh, um, effective but not efficient because also you we cannot we can see the results we can see the rank but not uh, see the, the the performances we cannot compare times etc so this is a problem we can solve with uh, with this solution i tried to find a ten keeping system for all kind of races we can uh, not only for running but uh, also for cycling or skating whatever you want uh, based on some premises like uh, this time keeping system should be or must be uh, low cost, uh, device independent, almost plug and play. And uh, one important thing that uh, it will provide uh, open data at the end. So all the results, all the information that is not sensitive about the athletes, uh, about the, the competition itself and the results, the performances should be um, exposed, should be published as uh, open um, open data. So in open standard formats. Uh, the idea is just uh, that runners should go through um, a series of uh, virtual gates or checkpoints along the course. We can have one which is the, the finish line, or uh, more than one, that we can measure timing in different parts of the, the course, just to have intermediate, uh, intermediate times in the, during the, the course and the race. Uh, the cornerstone of the, the solution is MQTT. Uh, this uh, queue of, um, well, all the checkpoints, one or, or uh, N checkpoints, are publishers to this MQTT queue. Uh, providing information about the specific time where um, when the, um, uh, the, the, the runner uh, went to this uh, virtual gate. So each checkpoint will produce uh, um, a message like uh, the one you see here is a, a JSON string with information about the checkpoint itself, the ID uh, that will be um, collected in advance by the controller, which is the subscriber waiting for some uh, these kind of uh, messages 
uh, the checking, we call it checking messages. Uh, so with the information about the checkpoint, maybe also information about uh, where it's uh, located. We have information about the coordinates and uh, information about the identifier of the, the runner. In this case, the VIP number or the if we have any uh, um, uh, RFID tag, uh, we can use to have uh, to, to, to control the, the, um, the runner. We can use the identifier, the internal identifier of the RFID tag to, to provide this information. And also the timestamp in uh, uh, Unis, Unix uh, times, uh, time format. Um, as I told you, it's, uh, the checkpoints will produce this information and will uh, send it to a queue. And the subscriber, which is the, a controller, a main controller, we can have uh, more than one, but for this pilot, I only uh, develop one, will be uh, waiting for these kind of messages, uh, um, will manage all this, this information, um, um, managing also the, the quality of service of this queue to receive at least one uh, the, each message. Yet, uh, if, we, if, we, if the controller receive, receives more than one, he, he can uh, omit uh, all, all the, the repeated one, ones. And after that, as you can see in the, the lower part, we can, um, the controller can uh, publish that information as open data. We can uh, do some visualizations. We can share the information. We can provide statistics, etc. And um, those checkpoints, uh, I've been trying to, to design them using um, low cost components, uh, reducing components I had at home. For instance, uh, proof of concept using a um, infrared remote control. Even you can uh, do it uh, with your uh, TV remote control. Uh, well, this is not very efficient. Uh, you have to point directly to the receptor, to the, the sensor, because uh, the, it's infrared. So it, you need a, a direct, um, direct, direct uh, point to, the, to the, the sensor. So it's not very efficient. But it, this was created just yes, as a proof of, proof of concept. If we have more uh, budget, more money, we can improve the, the solution using a Bluetooth uh, keypad or a USB keyboard using the keypad which is really easy to, to use, just type in the bit number of the, the runner, and uh, the Raspberry Pi will collect the information. I will send it uh, along with the timestamp to the, the queue, the MQTT queue. And even going further, farther um, and creating a, a more advanced uh, solution using RFID, using this kind of uh, tags and uh, using a well, a low cost uh, RFID uh, reader plus um, an antenna. Just forget this kiwi. It's just uh, because my kitchen was the the, the cleanest uh, space in my room in my flat. So I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I did some uh, proof of concepts using uh, some colleagues of mine uh, running and using this uh, uh, collecting the information. In this kind of uh, small bit numbers with a tag attached in to, to the back, and uh, so we can mix both approaches: the the, the checkpoints using the local solution with a keyboard, typing the bit number. Plus, uh, maybe we can install another um, uh, another checkpoint in another place using the RFID uh, technology. The controller was implemented using a, a Meteor uh, application, which is uh, built on uh, Node.js uh, plus uh, MongoDB. And uh, as I told you, it's a, a subscriber of this uh, MQTT queue. Uh, he, uh, this, this piece of uh, this, uh, this uh, component waits for uh, a couple of um, kind of topics uh, in the queue one checking which is the, the when uh, a runner uh, do the, the checking in a virtual gate and also a previous one which is ready um, a message when uh, that it's sent by each uh, um, uh, each uh, checkpoint once is ready is connected to the net uh, and it's ready and um, well the last part was uh, providing information about the in open data about the results, about the all the the runners and the competitions using open data, open uh, vocabularies. We are um, 
defining in a, in a community group in W3C, which is uh, this one, Open Track Community Group. We are defining a vocabulary based on JSON-LD, uh, JSON linked data. Uh, it's a semantic version of the JSON. Uh, and also based on schema.org, which is the vocabulary or the schema uh, that uh, Google, Bing, and uh, all these uh, browsers and uh, search engine engines used to to classify and to understand the the reality behind all the documents on the web. Uh, I mean the semantics. And uh, the objective of this uh, community group is uh, created, creating standards to describe and publish uh, data in competitions, in athletics in general, calendar, results, competitions, etc. And this is just a, a kind of an example of these results from this pilot uh, just produced and just a, as a proof of, of concept, but you can see it's a, a kind of enriched uh, JSON. Uh, document. Some some lessons uh, learned during this project, uh, as uh, my colleagues uh, tell you, I told you, um, I learned a lot. Uh, I'm a programmer, not very good programmer, but I'm a programmer, <laughs> and I thought uh, at the beginning that um, doing this kind of uh, prototype in this uh, uh, project could be something similar to software development, but not many uh, a lot of uh, uh, more variables to take into account uh, it, it's not just plug in and play and uh, programming just uh, you will find many many more variables to to take into account so uh, it's it's much more uh, difficult um, also uh, it was very fun and it was very important having the community supporting you because uh, all the pieces of code uh, you know you you, you must uh, need are available uh, for almost everything uh, on the on the web so and uh, if not people will be uh, willing to help you and uh, most of the the clients were implementing uh, using uh, um, uh, open libraries and open source uh, code which was a very, very nice for, for the solution. Also, the, the key part of the, the solution was based on Mosquito and Paho uh, for implementing most of the, the pieces. And I think that the most, uh, the, the most important uh, lesson I learned was that uh, making some, something beautiful is not functional. <laughs> uh, this is the, the components of the, this, on the, on the right. Uh, it's uh, a Raspberry Pi, and the, the other component is the um, RFID reader plus the antenna. Well, I tried to to uh, print uh, in 3D a uh, nice cage, which was uh, amazing. It was my, my first design, and I was very proud of it. But after compiling everything, it didn't work. <laughs> Something weird with the, some fields uh, using this uh, uh, bad arrangement of the components, but. Uh, if I at the beginning I had um, a range of uh, three four meters long uh, to read the uh, um, single RFID tag. After uh, compiling this and inserting in the in the cage in the in this package, uh, it only had uh, around uh, on half a meter or just uh, uh, yeah half a meter of range uh, reading range. So. Um, if you copy, uh, well, uh, all the, the code is available on the repository. Uh, you, can, you can have a look at it. Do not rely too much on the code, please. <laughs> I'm not, as I told you, not, I'm a programmer, but not a good pro pro programmer. And uh, as I told you, the, the design for this cage, uh, this uh, package is not very efficient. So uh, do not rely too much. Uh, the next step, I will keep working on it, and I will try to, to do a pilot for my, my friends. I will let you know if it, if it works or not. And thank you very much for, for your time. If you have any questions, uh, let me know. If you need more information, everything is uh, here. Uh, all code is uh, published here. As, uh, as I told you, do not rely too much on it. <laughs> Thank you, Martin. We actually have a question from Alex. He wants to know, how did you set up the hardware for the different checkpoints, and how do you connect between them? Uh, no. Um, 
actually, I, uh, I was improvising. I tried to um, uh, use the, the hardware I had at home. Um, as I showed you the, some uh, pieces of, uh, well, I had a couple of uh, Arduino kits uh, where I took the uh, infrared um, uh, control to, to do the, the first pilot. This was just a, a proof of con concept. Mm -hmm. And uh, I tried to, uh, to grab all the, 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 the old components I have uh, around. So I, I was based on uh, mainly on uh, Raspberry Pis because it was very straightforward to implement. Uh, I had to learn how to program in uh, Python to do it uh, also into a uh, app square uh, to, to 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 be able to mix the the components so the idea was uh, doing a, implementing a very flexible uh, platform so i didn't care too much about the selection of the components uh, so i tried to to do it in in python just to to be able to move uh, from one device to to the other to another and and the the, the biggest problem perhaps was uh, buying the the uh, RFID reader because uh, I, I bought it in China in a Chinese to a Chinese provider. It was very cheap, but all the devices were for only for uh, Windows. So I had to to create to program the to create the my own uh, drivers for the the, wow. the the reader. So it was very challenging because of that. I learned uh, the, the Python uh, language. So uh, the idea was uh, using a common um, language to, to be able to, to implement it on, uh, on any kind of uh, hardware. So it was a, a bit, uh, I was improvising. Okay. <laughs> on the field later, how do you see them communicating with each other, the devices? Oh, um, in the field, I used a, a, um, a 3G module. Uh, in in one in one piece, uh, for other um, in in other in other checkpoint, I use uh, a Wi-Fi connection. Uh, I had uh, Wi-Fi connectivity, and for for other checkpoint in the in the test, I use a a mobile mobile phone using a as a access point. So I used uh, several technologies and several several communication uh, protocols to to do it. All right, thank you. Thank you. So if you have questions for our speaker and you weren't live, you can ask them in the comments and we will forward them. Uh, if you are interested in the projects, the IoT projects that they talked about, you can just go on iot.eclipse.org and they're all there and you can download them and try them out. I also want to tell you that Benjamin and I will be at EclipseCon France next week. So if you're there, stop by and say hello. And we don't have a scheduled virtual IoT for upcoming, but we have plans to schedule some soon. We're talking to speakers, so stay tuned, and we look forward to seeing you this summer. Thank you to our speakers once again, and I hope you enjoyed participating in the challenge. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.